Hi everybody, so today I'm gonna to be talking about the semicircular canals. Now, if you've watched my videos, you'll see I did a video on the external ear. I've done a video on the middle ear. I've done a video on the inner ear in which I dealt with the cochlea. I've done a video in the inner ear in which I talked about the organ of corti. And I've also done a video on the inner ear where I talk about the vestibule, which contains the utricle and the saccule. So today I'm gonna to finish those up and we're gonna be talking about the semicircular canals. So let's go ahead and get started. So. Just to orient yourself, we're looking at the, uh, the vestibular apparatus on the left side. So to give you an idea of where this at, is at, if I were to draw a line that came in my left eye and another line that came in my left ear, where those two lines intersect, that's about where my semicircular canal or my vestibular apparatus and my cochlea would be. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And just to reorient you, this is my cochlea right here. All right, that's the cochlea that was responsible for hearing. This is my vestibule that you see right in here. And we said in the vestibule, we had the utricle and we had the saccule. I'm not going to spell those out simply because I don't have enough room. Now, if you look, you can see we have the semicircular canals. Now, these all look like they're flat, but they're actually at different angles to each other. They're, uh, they're at about 90 degree angles to each other. Okay. So first, before we get started, why, why do we have semicircular canals? Well, semicircular canals are responsible for something we call dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so they're going to be responsible for dynamic equilibrium. So what's dynamic equilibrium? This is when your body keeps its balance due to sudden motions of the body or the head, right? So if I move real quick, that's going to be my semicircular canals, which are going to help with that, right? So if we look, we actually have three of these. And the first one is the anterior semicircular canal. This is going to be responsible for motions of the head of going up and down, right? So this is going to be up and down motions. And then I have this big one. This is going to be my posterior semicircular canal. And this is going to be responsible for, for head tilt. So when I tilt my head, this is going to sense it, right? Head tilt. And then the last one we have is this one right here, okay? This one is actually called the lateral semicircular canal or it's also known as the horizontal semicircular canal. Now, the way it's drawn right now, it looks like it's like this, but in actuality, it would be flat like this. The only reason I drew it like that is so you can see it's kind of making a circle, right? And I couldn't draw it this way, so that's why it looks like that. But this is gonna be responsible for when I shake my head back and forth, right? So this is back and forth. Okay, so now, that's, that's the different semicircular canals that we have. So let's take a look at these real quick. And what I want to do is I want to do a cross section of these. And what I mean is let's just say I could take anywhere on here, but what I'm going to do is let's say we want to cut a little piece out from here and look into this. So if I go like this and I pull this out and turn it towards you there, now it would be as if you were looking down the semicircular canal. If you notice, I have an orange line in there. That's actually representing a fluid. So what I'm going to do is the way the semicircular canals are is I have this blue part on the outside and then I'm going to have a fluid on the inside. So it's going to look something like this. I'm going to draw a picture of this in just a minute. So that's the way the semicircular canals would look. Okay. So if I were to draw it now, this is the way it would look. This blue part is actually made up of bone and we call this the outer bony labyrinth that's the blue part there then on the inside i am going to have a membrane and this is my membrane right here and we call this the inner membranous membrane i'm sorry labyrinth okay so there's the inner membranous labyrinth right there. So now this part, this out here is the semicircular canal. This part that's in here now is called the semicircular duct. This is the semicircular duct that's inside the inner membranous labyrinth. This part out here is the outer bony labyrinth, okay? So let's take a look at these structures a little bit more. In the inner membranous labyrinth, I am gonna have a fluid. Like I said, this is orange, and that's the orange you see right there, right? This fluid here is going to be called endolymph. 
So if you watch the videos on hearing, you would remember that endolymph has more potassium than sodium. All right, so that's my endolymph right there. Going around the semicircular canal, I have perilymph. Okay, perilymph, perilymph is going to have more sodium than potassium. Okay, so I, on the so the semicircular duct is going to have endolymph. The semicircular canal is going to have perilymph. If we go back over here, what you'll notice also is when we get to the end here, you, these, this opens up, right? You can see how it basically bulbs out like that. And then I have another one here, and I have another one here. So what exactly are those? Those openings are going to be called the ampulla. All right, that, they're going to be called the ampulla. So Inside the ampulla, we're going to have special cells in there, and it's going to make up something called the ampulla crystallaris, or the crista ampullaris, I'm sorry. It's going, to, it's going to be called the crista ampullaris. It's going to be inside of here, and I'm going to talk about those some more in just a minute. But because these are going up and down, my, my crista ampullaris for the anterior semicircular canal is going to be laying on its side. For the, post, uh, the posterior semicircular canal where I'm doing head tilt, these are going to be laying at an angle. My crista ampullaris is going to be laying at an angle. And then in my lateral semicircular canal, these are just going to be straight up and down. We're going to talk about the crista ampullaris some more right now. Okay, so that's it basically for the structure of the vestibular apparatus and the semicircular canal. So let's go and take a look real quick. And this is my ampulla. So just to show you real quick, like we said, this is, a, this is enlarged right over here, right? If we look here, this enlarged part would be my ampulla. That's the ampulla right there, okay? This here, where you see the blue, would be my bony, uh, my outer bony labyrinth, right, right there and up in there. And then like we said, in here, we would have perilymph. Okay, and I'd have perilymph down here too. This part in here now, this is my, my inner membranous uh, labyrinth. And then in here, I would have my endolymph. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to label this part here inside of my crista ampullaris in here. But whatever I draw here, I have another one drawn on the board over there, which we'll see in just a minute. Whatever I draw here would apply over there. So if we look at the crista ampullaris, the crista ampullaris would basically go from here. These are nerves that are coming off of these hair cells, which I'll talk about in just a minute. So my crista ampullaris would basically be this whole structure here, would be my crista ampullaris. Now, really quick, what's going to happen is this part that's just raised right here, we see this green line. This is actually going to be called my crista or crista. Okay. This part here is going to be a nerve and it's going to be called the vestibular nerve. The vestibular nerve is going to be made up with the cochlear nerve and then it's going to go on to become the vestibular cochlear nerve, also known as cranial nerve 8. These are hair cells, so the crista is going to be made up of hair cells. And then if you notice, we have like these finger-like projections sticking up. These are going to be called stereocilia. Now, stereocilia is technically one word, but I'm making it two simply because I don't have enough space. And then this is called the kinocilium. That's your kinocilium right there. All this in here, although I have a line going in it, all this in here is called the cupula. The cupula is made up of a gel-like substance. All right, it's made up of a gel-like substance. So here's what's going to happen when you go to here. Okay? I'm sorry, when you go, when you go to sense motion of the head. So let me move this over just a little bit more. Okay, you can start to see my other ones over there. So this is on my right side. So here's what's going to happen. When I move my head to the right, what happens is due to the inertia, the endolymph actually goes to the left. So I move my head to the right, and the endolymph goes to the left. So let me give you an example of this. 
This is just a simple uh, bottle I have, right? And what you're gonna notice, I'm gonna move this to the right, but you're gonna notice I am going to get a lot of fluid, or I'm gonna get fluid hit on this side. It's gonna, ease, it's gonna even out real quick, but I'm gonna get fluid hit on this side. So if I go like that, you can see how right here gets a lot of fluid or the fluid actually goes to the left as the bottle went to the right. Same thing here, so that when that endolymph, when I turn my head to the right, the endolymph goes to the left, right? So here comes my endolymph coming to the left, right? So here's what's gonna happen now. All this endolymph is going to come and it's going to hit this cupola. When it hits the cupola, it moves the cupola to the left. The head's going to the right, the endolymph goes to the left, the cupola goes to the left. When the cupola goes to the left, these stereocilia here are also going to go to the left. They're going to go this way towards the kinocilium. Okay, so when the, when, when the head goes to the right, the endolymph comes this way, hits the cupola, the cupola goes that way, and the stereocilia go that way also. So let's take a look at what happens now. So I'm going to draw a hair cell here. There's my kinocilium. There's my stereocilia, right? I know I didn't make these as big as over there, but if we take a look on the top of my stereocilia, I actually have a protein that we call tip links. That's tip links. So the way this is going to work is like this. As the stereocilia go towards the kinocilium, imagine it's like this. Let me go this way. And imagine I'm in an attic and I have a door that's on the floor of the attic and I need to get out and there's a rope and I pull that rope up. So I'm going like this and I pull up, right? I'm gonna pull up as my body comes back as I do that. When the stereocilia go towards the kinocilium, the tip links are going to pull up, like I just said, and we're gonna get openings in the ion channels in here. When we get openings in the ion channels, two things are gonna happen. One, potassium is going to start rushing in. Right, so I'm gonna get potassium rushing into here. But the other thing that's going to come in here is I'm also going to get calcium coming in. Now, inside of here, I have a vesicle. And in that vesicle, you are going to have neurotransmitters, okay? So here's my neurotransmitters in here. And the name of these neurotransmitters are going to be glutamate. Okay, I have glutamate in there. The calcium is going to connect proteins down here between this vesicle and the cell membrane of the hair cell, right? It's going to connect those proteins. And when it does, now my vesicle is open and now my glutamate can escape or come out. Down in here, like we saw here, I have a nerve. So this is basically where I'm at right now is right here. I just didn't draw the vesicle in there. I have a nerve. So now what's going to happen is when this neurotransmitter, this glutamate, hits the neurotransmitter, it starts to send signals to the brain, okay? And, and in fact, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the brain stem and it's gonna to go to the pons in the brain stem, okay? So that's when I turn my head to the right, right, on the right side. Let's look what's going to happen on the left side. So if we go over here now, we're going to look at this like this. When I turn my head to the right, the endolymph went to the left. That means the endolymph on this side is also going to go to the left. So my endolymph is going to go this way. There goes my endolymph. Now, because the endolymph is moving away, the stereocilia now is also going to move away from the kinocilium because the stereocilia is moving away from the kinocilium what's going to happen is instead of having these gates open they are going to be closed so this is deep when it open we call that depolarization right in this case it's going to hyperpolarize right i'm going to actually start losing potassium out of this and what's going to happen now is i'm not going to have this vesicle meet with the, I'm sorry, this vesicle is not going to release the glutamate. Because it's not releasing the glutamate, we get a decrease in signals to the brain, right? 
we're going to get a decrease in signal. So if I back up for just a second, both of these, when your head is still, are, are sending signals to the brain. When you turn the head, if I turn to the right, this side increases signals to the brain, but this side decreases it. So when the brain realizes, okay, the, the right side has an increase in signals, but the left side has a decrease, therefore, I must be turning my head to the right, right? Now, what happens the other way? Let's say now I turn my head to the left. It's going to be the exact opposite. Instead of the endolymph leaving, the endolymph is now going to go this way. It's going to be exactly like we saw on the right side. This is all going to go this way, right? Now my, the gates will all open and everything. And on this side, the signals will decrease. The endolymph on that side is going to go away from the stereocilia. And I'm going to get a decrease in signals, but an increase from here. So if I turn my head to the right, the, this crista ampullaris is going to increase the signals going to the brain. This side will decrease them. If I turn my head to the left, this side will increase them, and this side will decrease them. Same thing with going up and down. Or if I wanted to, if it was my head, and I was going to head tilt, just turn these sideways, and I would get the same thing. The tube would actually be at an angle now, right? If I was to look up and down, I'm just going to have these basically going up and down like this. So... And, and it's going to be the same thing. One direction is going to increase the sensation and another direction is going to be decreased. So that's basically it for the semicircular canals. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And we will see you next time. Thanks so much.